Your Classical Storytime is supported by the Minnesota College Savings Plan, the official 529 program for the state of Minnesota. Learn how you can invest for your child's college education and minimize your taxes at mnsaves.org. Welcome to Your Classical Storytime. I'm Valerie with a story called Bells in the Night. Once upon a time, there was a king who got a bit of a chill. I've got a bit of a chill, dear, he said to the queen. Off to bed with you, then, she said. But it's the middle of the day, and, and I'm not at all sleepy. <coughs> Chew! Mm-hmm. So off to bed it was for the king, with a hot water bottle and a woolen cap and seven extra blankets. He sneezed Achoo! one more time and fell right into a deep sleep. <coughs> When he woke up a few hours later, he felt just fine. His chill was gone. I do believe my chill is gone, he said to no one in particular, and he went about the business of being a king. That night, he went to bed at the usual time, just after 10, but he could not fall asleep. He tossed and turned this way and that, threw off the blankets, added more blankets. He even tried sleeping with his head at the foot of the bed, but nothing worked. So he just lay there. After a very long time, he heard a clock somewhere in the kingdom strike the hour. He counted 11 chimes and deduced it must be 11 o'clock. It must be 11 o'clock, he said to no one in particular. When the first clock finished, a second one began to chime. It also chimed 11 times. Etc., etc., 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 times. You get it. Then a third clock. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven times. A fourth. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven times. A fifth. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven times. And so on, until all the clocks in the kingdom had sung their song. The king lay there some more, thinking about elevens. After a very, very long time, the clocks began to chime again, one after another. The king figured it was 12 o'clock. I figure it's 12 o'clock. He pulled out his gold watch on its long chain to double check, and he saw that it was indeed 12 o'clock. In fact, it was five minutes past 12. Wait just a ding-dong second, said the king. When a clock strikes one, it's one o'clock. When a clock strikes 11, it's 11 o'clock. But is it 11 o'clock at the first chime or the last chime? or on the sixth chime, right in the middle, and, and... He continued, getting more flustered by the second. If it's 11 o'clock at the first stroke of the first clock, then all the other clocks in the kingdom are wrong. They are lying. I cannot with clocks that do not tell the truth. I'll have to see to this and do something about... <sighs> and the king collapsed onto his pillow, asleep at last. The king awoke the next day and sat on the edge of his bed to yawn and stretch and wiggle his toes. <sighs> Mid-wiggle, a clock began to chime. Uh, I'll see to those clocks today, he said. He ordered a message to be written, and the heralds announced it throughout the kingdom. Hear ye! Hear ye! All bell ringers and clock strikers are to appear at the palace Tuesday next, between the hours of 11 and high noon, at the command of the king. When Tuesday morning arrived, the bell ringers and clock strikers filled the great hall of the palace, all dressed in their finest clothes. At 10 minutes to noon, according to the king's pocket watch, the king strode into the hall. 
The bell ringer stood and bowed. Please sit down, the king said, and listen. Some closed their eyes to listen. A few cupped a hand behind an ear. Some leaned forward on their elbows, heads tilted. No one knew what they were listening for. They waited and waited and waited and waited. Finally, the king pulled out his pocket watch and looked at it. Bell ringers and clock strikers, you've been invited here to answer a very serious question. What time is it? Everyone took out their watches. Uh, two minutes to noon. Two minutes past noon. Just That can't noon. be right. Oh, my watch no, is stopped. Five this morning. minutes to noon. noon. Well? Interrupted the king. What time is it? Uh, right around noon, your highness. Someone squeaked. Very well, then. Listen. A bell began to strike noon. In a far corner was a wee little man, the oldest bell ringer in the kingdom. He smiled to himself as he heard his bell and nodded along to each bong. One by one, the clocks of the kingdom struck, each in its own way. Long, slow, unhurried bongs. Short, high clings. Booming clangs. Tinkling chimes. Finally, each clock had done its work. The king said, Notice anything? Pretty. Right on time. Just like always. Excuse me, can anyone tell me what clocks are for? Uh, to tell the time, Your Majesty? Yes. Is a clock doing its job if it's not telling the right time? No, no, no. Of course not, Highness. Then how is it that each clock strikes at a different time? The wee old man spoke. Your, your Highness, because I am the oldest bell ringer in the kingdom, my clock always chimes first. The others follow in order. Your father and his father before him liked it that way, and I hope it pleases you as well. No, it does not please me. One bell striking the hour should be enough, but I have no desire to put the rest of the bell ringers out of work. <sighs> No, instead, all the bells, chimes, gongs, and clocks will strike at once, starting tonight at midnight. I have spoken. There was nothing for the bell ringers to do but obey. That night, the king went to bed early and fell into a deep, deep sleep. The rest of the kingdom drifted off one by one after him. The watchman did his rounds and cried out, All's well. Sleep safely. The night was calm with only the sound of crickets. Then it happened. A great ear-splitting crash. Like an entire summer's worth of thunder let loose at once. The palace, the whole kingdom, seemed to shudder. What could it be? Was it an earthquake? An explosion? An invasion? The end of the world? All through the palace, people sprang from their beds in a panic. The king had been knocked right onto the floor by the force of the sound. Townspeople in their pajamas huddled together against the horrific noise and made their way to the palace courtyard, seeking the safety of its strong walls. One final ear-splitting crash sounded. Once again, the kingdom was quiet. But the townspeople weren't. Everybody wanted to know what danger the kingdom faced and what the king was going to do about it. Friends, friends, good people, A great disaster has come to us, yet we still stand. At first light, we shall learn what threatens us and make our plans. Please, go home and sleep if you can. Your Majesty, cried a breathless messenger, just arrived. The bell ringers of your kingdom greet you. They hope you are pleased now with the clocks. A cry of relief went up from the townspeople. It was only the clock striking all at once, said the king. 
he called to the messenger and whispered something in his ear. The very next hour, the clocks of the kingdom took turns chiming 1 a.m. Just like they had for years and years. The king was well pleased, and everyone finally got some sleep. The end. Thanks for listening to Your Classical Storytime from American Public Media. Find out more about today's story and check out the rest of the library at yourclassical.org slash storytime.